but that's not essential to know. What is essential to know when you see something like this is that this is not, I know I've said it before, this does not equal, all right, that means does not equal x squared plus 6 squared, okay? What you have to do is just take that whole situation and multiply it by itself. So that means you end up foiling, which was this example. So the only things you need to know to do these, even though it does give you these formulas, all you need to know is to write this twice and then to foil it and then combine like terms, okay? So here we have x plus y squared. If we were to use this, that would mean it's x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, right? Following that formula, because x would be equal to our a and y would be equal to our b. Or, so I'm sorry, so if we filled this out, right, we know that this is a plus between them. So we're going to do this one. a squared is x squared. 2ab is just going to be 2. Can you move that down just a little bit? Yeah, sorry, I was trying to keep this and what I was saying in the frame. So I'm referencing this and I'm writing this because X is A, Y is B. Good, plus two X is A, Y is B, plus B squared, which is just Y squared, right? So I can use that formula to find it or I can just foil it, okay? So I'll foil it and you'll see that you get the same answer in the end. X plus Y quantity squared is the same as X plus Y times X plus Y. Good. X times X is X squared. X times Y is XY. And then we'll go on to the Y. Now the Y times the X is YX or XY. You want to keep it in order. And then Y times Y is Y squared. You can combine the like terms of xy plus xy. Again, you're not multiplying, you're just adding, so you're just counting them. I have one xy, and I'm combining it with a second xy, or one plus one is two xy. So that's still x squared plus two xy plus y squared. So you see, either way, you get the same answer. There's a pattern. All this is saying is that there's a pattern when you are multiplying something by itself, a binomial by itself. Here are two more. They're a bit more complex. So 2x plus 5y squared means we can either square a, add 2 times a times b, and then square b, or I think it's just another opportunity to practice foiling. 2x plus 5y times 2x plus 5y. Or it just gives you extra confidence in your foiling maybe, right? So 2x times 2x, you multiply the 2 times the 2 gives you a 4. The x times the x gives you an x squared. Then you'll go on to the next term, 2 times the 5y. Positive 2 times a positive 5 is 10. x times y is xy. Then you've done 2x times both of those um, terms. So now go on to the positive 5y. 5y times 2x. 5 times 2 is 10. x times y is just x and y. Bring them along because they're not being multiplied by anything. Or sorry, there is only one of each of them. And then 5y times 5y. 5 times 5 is 25. And then just like x times x was x squared, y times y is y squared. For x squared, these two are like terms. It's a positive 10xy plus 10xy. So 10 plus 10 is just 20. That one stays the same. So I'm doing it the long way. You're welcome to do it the short way if it makes sense to you. Here's one where you subtract. The difference when you subtract is that this is going to be a minus sign. a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Good. 
So 6a squared minus 2b squared means we take that 6a squared minus 2, oops, minus 2b, and we multiply by itself. 6a squared minus 2b. Good. And then just like we did here, you take the first term, multiply it by the first, then the second, take the second term, multiply it by the first and the second. Make sure that you recognize that the negative goes with the 2b. So that's a negative 2b. That's not just a minus. The minus becomes a negative 2b. So 6a squared times 6a squared. 6 times 6 is 36. A squared times A squared. Remember the rule for adding exponents? A to the power of M times A to the power of N equals A to the power of M plus N, right? So that's A to the power of 2 plus 2. 6A squared times a negative 2B. So 6 times negative 2 is a negative 12 a squared and b, you just, um, you don't need to combine any exponents, right? Because those are different bases. So we have 6a to the fourth minus 12a squared b. Then you move on to the negative 2b times 6a squared. Um, you'll notice the pattern that when you are multiplying something by itself, your middle terms are always the same, right? So 6a times negative 2, or sorry, 6a squared times negative 2b is going to be the same as negative 2b times 6a squared. So that's negative 12ab. The next one's going to be negative 12ab. And then I've run out of room. And our last one is negative 2b times negative 2b. This remains a plus because a negative times a negative becomes a positive. So negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. b times b is just b squared, right? If you simplify that, so just combine like terms, 36a to the fourth, these two are the same. So you're just um, multiplying it by two, right? So you're taking that negative 12 and you're multiplying it by two, or you're just adding negative 12 and negative 12 is negative 24a squared b plus 4b squared. Oops, sorry. If you have this, if you have, for example, x plus y times x minus y, or 3 plus x times 3 minus x, what you're going to get is that first term squared minus that second term squared. Sorry to interrupt you, but is yeah. this still 5.4? Yeah, sorry, it's the end. We're still on. <laughs> I went super slow yesterday. And so we're still on the last example. So we'll have one, two, three, four more examples from 5.4. Good question. That was a very good question. And I should have gone faster yesterday. I apologize. So what you're doing is if you see the same terms with different signs between them being multiplied together, you're now you can just square each one. Or Again, as I've been saying throughout um, 5.4, you can just FOIL it. So 2x times 2x, right? 4x squared. 2x times a negative 4. So 2 times 4 is a 6. Positive times a negative is a negative. There was an x with the 2, so I'm going to call it negative 6x. Move on to your positive 4. Positive 4 times 2 is 8. 2 has an x, so it's 8x. And then finally, you have positive 4 times negative 4. A positive times a negative is going to be a negative. Oh, did I seriously just do that, guys? The whole point of this, 2 times negative 4 is not negative 6. It's negative 8. The whole point of this 
was to show you that these cancel. <laughs> and I didn't even do the math correctly. All right. Positive times a negative is going to be a negative. Four times four is 16, right? So I apologize for that. Obviously, two times four is eight, not six. So 4x squared minus 8x plus 8x minus 16. What happens when you have those same two terms, but you have different signs is that the middle terms cancel each other out. So a negative 8x plus an 8x means it disappears. So now it becomes zero. Now what you have is 4x squared minus 16, which was 2x, if you squared the whole term 2x, 2 squared is 4, x squared is x squared, 4 squared is 16. a plus b times a minus b is a squared minus b squared. 2x plus 4 times 2x minus 4 is going to be 2x squared minus 4x squared. Again, you're never going to, it's never going to be the wrong answer to just foil it. So 5a times 5a here is going to be 25a squared. 5a times a negative 3, positive times a negative is a negative, 15a. Next one is 3 times 5a. Let's hope I get the same answer this time, right? 3 times 5 is 15a. So the only thing that's going to be different about 5a times the negative 3 and positive 3 times 5a is going to be the sign. So this one's a negative 15a and this one's a positive 15a. That is going to be the only difference. Okay. And now we have positive 3 times a negative 3. Positive times a negative is always a negative. 3 times 3 is 9. Again, you see that the middle terms cancel out. Negative 15 plus 15a just becomes zero a's, which is zero. So you have 25a squared minus 9. All right, same thing here. If you wanted to, you can cut straight to a squared minus b squared, right? So 18c squared, or sorry, 8. 8c squared. 8 squared is 64. So 8c plus 2d becomes 8c squared minus 2d squared. So if you wanted to take the faster route, 8 squared, we said it's 64. But the c squared just remains c squared minus 2 squared, we know it is Four, right? Because two times two is four. D squared is just D squared. Good. Or you could do it 8C times 8C is 64C squared. 8C times negative 2D is negative 16CD. 2D and 8C, they're both positive. So it's going to be a positive 16CD. And then positive 2d times a negative 2d is, an, D is a negative 4d squared. The negative 16 and the positive 16 cancel out. And you're left with 64c squared minus 4d squared. So the tricks, um, those shortcuts do always work. But if, you, if they also don't make sense to you, I wouldn't worry about them not making sense. I wouldn't spend time trying to understand those. And I just say that so many times because honestly, like when I first learned this, I remember that I didn't like those. I didn't pay attention to them. All right. Here we have a complex example. X minus 3 times X plus 3 times X squared minus 9. You are welcome to use shortcuts if you want. Or you can just take you have three terms, right? One, two, three, um, or three, how many? Mm, you have three factors, we should call these, good? And I would just go, just like when you're adding, right? If I'm adding 19 plus four plus 10, I just add these two first, 
whatever that answer is, I add 10, right? So you can multiply x minus 3 times x plus 3, whatever your answer is, then multiply that with x squared minus 9. And you can do it however you like. So if you remember the rule for a minus b times a plus b, you can apply that rule. Or you can. I think I have the answer. Can I tell you and see if I was right? Yes. So would it be x to the fourth minus 18x squared Ooh, plus you're 81? Right so far. Yes. You got it. What did you do? Um, I foiled. Good. All right. Let's foil with her. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. Then go on to your negative 3. Ignore that one for now. Negative 3 times x is a negative 3x. Negative 3 times a positive 3 is a negative 9. Good? Don't forget, so just out of respect for the whole math problem, add that behind it. But we're still just going to look at this one, OK? So now you can combine the like terms of positive 3x and negative 3x. Those cancel. And you just get x squared minus 9 times, ooh, x squared minus 9. So you can use shortcut rules if you want. You are welcome to. Or you can just FOIL again. x squared times x squared. You're going to add those two exponents and get x to the fourth. Then you're going to go to x squared times a negative 9. So x to the fourth minus 9x squared. Then negative 9 times x squared is also a negative 9x squared. Then you're going to say negative 9 times a negative 9. Negative times a negative becomes a positive. So that's going to be a plus. 9 times 9 is 81. Good. Simplify. x to the fourth. Negative 9x squared minus 9x squared is a negative 18x squared plus 81. That was very brave, too, because you didn't know. You didn't know the other right answer, but you did. Well done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, 5.5 is what we're on now. And um, it is... It is still multiplication, but what we're practicing today is pulling something out of a, um, a polynomial, okay? So what we're pulling out is a greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is the largest quantity that is a factor of all the integers involved, okay? So if, let me see, how much does this matter? Factors are... Numbers you multiply together. Numbers. OK, so if you have the number 6, some factors of 6 are 6 and 1, negative 6 and negative 1. I'm just going to write another 6. Um, 3 and 2, negative 3 and negative 2. Those are the factors of six. Or I know that we have already in this class done a factor tree. So a factor tree for six might be, well, that's not really helpful because there are only prime factors. A factor tree for 12 might be six times two. And then six becomes three times two. And two is already in its prime factorization, a prime factorization means that the only thing you can divide it by is one and itself. All right. So if we're looking at the number 12, some factors of 12 are six, three, and two. Because six times two is 12, three times two times two is 12. You could also say that 12 has the factors. 1 and 12, 6 and 2, I'm going out of order, 3 and 4, which didn't show up in this factor tree. But once you're at the bottom of your factor tree, these are called your prime factors. Good? So when you hear factors, you we're just talking about multiplied numbers. Okay? What are the factors of 12? Some factors of 12 are 1, 12, 
12, 6, 2, 3, and 4. Good. Um, is this the first time we introduced the word prime? Yeah. So prime factors means that all you can multiply that number by is itself and the number one. Yes. Good. All right. So when we are, when you look at the number 12, think, okay, well, these don't help you. One and 12 don't help you. Those are the prime factors, but I can take 12. I can divide it by the number six. I can take 12. I can divide it by the number two. I can divide it by the number three and I can divide it by the number four, right? I can take six. I can divide it by three, two, negative three or negative two. And I guess I should include one, negative one, negative 12 negative six, negative two, negative three, negative four, but those will not come up right now. Um, but basically, if I multiply these together, I get 12. If I multiply these together, I get 12. And this is the prime factorization of 12. Or sorry, this is, if 12 didn't have any other factors, it would be a prime number. So the prime factorization is just that number by itself. Uh, the greatest common, ooh, good question. So someone asked, does that mean that six is the greatest common factor of 12? Good question. So greatest means biggest number, right? Oh my gosh, such a good question. Come teach this class for me. So is, if the biggest number that we can put with 12, or sorry, that we can divide 12 by is six, is 12 the greatest common factor of the number 12? And so greatest means the biggest number, right? But common means to all, right? It's true, in this case, it would be like true to all or for all, right? So common means you need another number to compare it to. So if it was 12 and the number mm, 18, so if you listed all the factors of 18 and all the factors of 12, yes, the greatest common factor of six and 18, or sorry, of 12 and 18 is six. So common means that it needs to be for both of them, but yes, you're looking for, it would not, so some other factors of 12 and 18 are, right, you can, um, divide them both by two and you'll get a whole number. You can divide them both by one and you'll get a whole number. You can divide them both by six. You can divide them both by three. Those are all common factors of 12 and 18, but the greatest common factor of 12 and 18 is six. So you find all the common factors to both your terms, or in some cases, all three of your terms, and then you pick the biggest one of all those numbers. Very good question. All right, so if you hear the word prime, it just means that it's like the number seven. You can only divide it by num the number one and itself. There are no other numbers it divides by. Or the number three. Find the greatest common, so true to both, factor of each list of numbers. Greatest means biggest, common means for both of them. Good. So if I had to make, I know I've made the list of 12 already, but my factors for 12, you can just go down the list. If I divide 12 by one, I get the number 12, right? If I divide 12 by two, I get the number six. If I divide 12 by three, I get the number four. And then, oh, I'm already dividing by four. I get three, five. It's not on there. Six, I get two. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I can't divide by any of those. Good. So here are my factors of 12. My other term is an 8. If I divide 8 by 1, I get the number 8. If I divide 8 by 2, I get the number 4. If I divide 8 by 3, I don't get a whole number. 8 by 4, I get 2. So I'm already, you can stop as soon as you start meeting um, those numbers. Good. So you list your factors. Those are all the factors of eight, all the factors of 12. Which ones are common to both eight and 12? Well, there's the number one, there's the number two, and there's the number four. Those so are it would be four? 
Yes, because four is the biggest of all the common factors. You got it. All right, our next example, seven and 20. I think I just said that seven is prime because the only factors of seven are one and seven. You don't even need to list out the number, the, sorry, the factors for 20 because you can't take 20 and divide it by seven. You can take 20 and divide it by one, but we just call that prime. I guess you can say your GCF is one, but it's more common to say that this number, these, this pair of numbers is a prime set. All right, what if you have variables? What if you have x to the third and x to the seventh? Think about what x to the third is, okay? x to the third means I've taken x and I've multiplied it by itself three times. Each of those is a factor of x to the third. So x is a factor of x to the third. If I multiply x by x to the third, I get x squared, right? If I take x to the third and divide it by x squared, I get x. And if I take it x to the third and divide it by x to the third, I get one, right? So you can think of x to the third. All the factors of x to the third are x, x squared, and x to the third. All the factors of x to the seventh, this is not the easiest way to explain it, are x, x squared, x to the third, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, x to the sixth, and x to the seventh, right? Those are all factors of x to the seventh. We can divide it and get, um, divide that by any of those and get a number, a whole number back or a um, variable. But it's much easier to just think, just think x to the third is three x's. x to the seventh means there are seven x's. Good. And what are we going to do? We're going to divide out the greatest amount of x's I can divide out. So I'm going to divide out three on top. Or sorry, not top. I like it's a fraction. Three from x to the third and three from x to the seventh. So the greatest common factor of x to the third and x to the seventh is x to the third. x to the third divided by x to the third is, is one x to the seventh divided by x to the third is x to the fourth. That's how many are left if I take away three. So you're just subtracting seven minus three, or sorry, seven minus three would be four. Yeah, that's the answer, but that's, ignore what I just saw. We're just finding the greatest common factor. We're not finding the answer if I cancel this. All right, so if you have a number and a variable, you need to do both of those things at once. So you need to do, the greatest common factor of the numbers and the greatest common factor of the variables. Remember the variables is just canceling, okay? So I have x to the fifth and x to the third. Take your smallest variable and that's your greatest common factor. Your, or sorry, the smallest exponent of that variable is your greatest common factor. So I can't go above x to the third because that's x to the third. And I can take x to the, sorry, I can take x to the fifth and divide it by x to the third and it'll be x squared. Good. But six and four, totally different thing. So six, my factors and four, what are my factors? If I divide it by one, I'll get six. If I divide it by two, I'll get three. If I divide it by three, I'll get two. Four, if I divide it by one, I'll get four. If I divide it by two, I'll get two. So my factors of six are one, two, three, and six. My factors of four are one, two, and four. Common factors are one and two. Greatest common factor is two. You can start ignoring one because we wouldn't call, uh, I guess you can call one a greatest common factor. Sorry. So I'm gonna say it's two x cubed. All right, if you have three terms, it's exactly, whoa, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, guys. One moment. Huh. That was weird. How do I?
All right, sorry. All right, a cubed, b squared, a squared, b to the fifth, and a to the fourth, b to the seventh. Um, it's exactly the same thing if you have three terms as if you had two terms, all right? Take each variable as its own. So a to the third, a squared, and a to the fourth. My greatest common factor, what's my biggest a? The biggest exponent is two. So my, the greatest uh, common factor for all of my a's is the lowest number. We have b squared, b to the fifth, and b to the seventh. So it's just going to be b squared. I can take a to the third b squared and divide it by that. If I divided it by that, I would get a, a squared b to the fifth. If I divided it by that, I would get b to the third as my um, remainder. a to the fourth b to the seventh, I would be left with a squared b to the fifth if I divided them, but we will get to that. I'm just saying, you can look back and make sure. Yeah, 6x to the fifth can be divided by 2x cubed. 4x cubed can be divided by 2x cubed. You can look back after you find your answer. All right, so when you are factoring a polynomial, if you see a greatest common factor, factor that out first, okay? So write the polynomial as a product by factoring out the greatest common factor from all the terms. For example, 9x and 3, we can factor it. What can we divide both 9x and 3 by? We can divide them both by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 3 divided by 3 is 1, because if I was to make a list of my factors of 9x and my factors of 3, 9x, well, I'm going to ignore my x because that makes it complicated. Don't worry about that. 9 is 9 and 1, uh, 3 and 3, right? 3 is just three and one. So what's my greatest common factor? My greatest common factor is three. If you had a variable here, you could say it's three X, but there's no X here. So this three cannot be divided by any X. So that's why I ignored that X. You kind of treat them separately like we did over here. We treated the six and four separately from the X to the fifth and the X to the third. So nine X plus three, the greatest common factor is three. That means what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 9x and divide it by 3. 9x divided by 3 is 3x. Positive 3 divided by 3 is just the number 1, okay? And then you take your greatest common factor, you factored it out, and you write it as a product in front of it, okay? So now I have 3 times 3x plus 1 instead of, but it is also equal to 9x plus 3. Good? Because 3 times 3, 3 times 3x is 9x, 3 times 1 is 3. Here it's saying factor out the greatest common factor in each of the following polynomials. So you want to talk about 6x cubed minus 9x squared plus 12x. So it's in standard form. We're going to change it to factored form. Okay. This is standard form. We have the greatest exponent in the front in decreasing order. There are no factors. Okay. First, look at your x. The variables are kind of easier, right? We have x to the third, x squared, and x. What's my smallest x? My smallest, the smallest exponent of x is just x to the first. So I know that the greatest common factor of x cubed, x squared, and x is x. Don't worry about the signs in front of the numbers, okay? So x cubed, x squared, and x, the greatest common factor is x. Good. You can even write it like I wrote that last one. You're dividing it all by x. Then think about the number 6, 9, and 12. You're generally not going to factor out a negative, so you don't even need to think about it as 6, negative 9, and 12. You can just think 6, 9, and 12. What are my factors? And you're welcome to do it like this, but if you do just know, that's also fine. So my factors of 6 are 
six and one, uh, three and two. Sorry, I went backwards. Usually I start with one divided by one. Six divided by one is six. Six divided by two is three, right? Six divided by three is two. Now that you have these factors, you don't have to think about all the factors of 12. You just think, okay, my other two terms are nine and 12. Can I divide nine by six? No. Can I divide nine by three? Okay. Can I divide nine by two? No. Can I divide nine by one? Sure, that's useless. And then 12. I have my shortest list. I can divide it by six, but I can't divide nine by six, so that's already been eliminated. 12 divided by three? Yes, that's okay. That's already eliminated. 12 by one? Yes. My greatest common factor for six, nine, and 12 is three. Or you can make the whole list for six, six list for nine, and list for 12. That's also fine. So what we find is that the greatest common factor of six, negative nine, and 12 is three. So we're factoring out a three X and then we're writing it as a multiple of three X and six X cubed divided by three X, six divided by three is two. X cubed divided by X is just X squared because I know that X cubed divided by one X is subtraction. Three minus one is two. Now, negative nine divided by three is a negative three. X cubed divided by X is just an X. Positive 12 divided by three is a positive four. X divided by X leaves me with no X's. So after you fa factor out the greatest common, after you find the greatest common factor, you have to what's called factor it out. So you take that three X and you take it out. So six X cubed becomes two X squared because I factored out the three X. All right, same here, 14 X cubed Y plus seven X squared Y minus seven X Y. Think about your X's. What's your biggest X? Cubed squared raised to the power of one. That's my smallest one, right? What's my Y? Y, Y, and Y. So it's just gonna be Y to no exponent, to the exponent of one, good? All right, then think about your numbers. You have, here we had six, nine, and 12. Here we're going to have 14 and seven, right? We don't need a positive seven and a negative seven. It doesn't matter. Um, 14, what are my fact Or seven, what are my factors? That's a good one, right? Because seven divided by one is seven, and there are no other factors. Can I take 14 and divide it by seven? I can. I can divide it by both of these, but this is my biggest one. So my greatest common factor is seven. And I know that was a little bit uh, over explained, but that's what you can do with all of them, no matter how big your numbers are, all right? So that what that means is we take that seven X Y and we divide everything by seven X Y. Right here, we're gonna have seven X Y. I start writing things like before I say them. Okay. We're going to have your 7xy outside the parentheses. We're going to take your first term divided by 7xy. 14 divided by 7 is a positive 2. x cubed divided by x is an x squared. y divided by y disappears. Positive 7 divided by 7 is just 1. Okay, you don't even need to write it because you know you're going to have either an x or a y behind it. So don't even write the 1 or do it if you want. 7 divided by 7 is 1. x squared divided by x is just x. y divided by y, the y's disappear. Then we have a negative 7xy. Negative 7xy divided by 7xy. Now, negative 7 divided by 7 is a negative 1. x divided by x is a 1. y divided by y is a 1. So it's negative 1 times 1 times 1 or negative 1. Make sure you keep those in parentheses because to get back to this number, you need to take these three terms and multiply them all by 7xy. So that's what it means when you factor something out. You divide each term by it, and then you write it outside the rest in parentheses. This one is an odd one. 6 times x plus 2 minus y times x plus 2. Good. Just like here, you could divide 6 by 3, 
So sorry, you could divide 6x by 3x, you could divide 9x by 3x, and you could divide 12x by 3x. Here, you can divide 6 times x plus 2 minus y times x plus 2. You can divide them both by x plus 2 because that means multiply, right? So I can take out x plus 2 and put it in front just like I put the 3 in front because it's just 6 is 3 being multiplied by the 2, right? I pulled out an x plus 2 from both of them. x plus 2 goes right here, just like the 3x goes right here. 6 times x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 just leaves me with a 6. Negative y times x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 just get, leaves me with negative y. Done. That is really all. Promise that is all. Same here. We have x times y times y plus 1 in parentheses. The parentheses are very important. Minus y plus 1. The common factor here is y plus 1. So I can take out y plus 1. I put it in front. Again, parentheses are very important here as well. When I take when I take x times y times y plus 1 divided by y plus 1, what I'm left with it will, is x times y. Here, when I have negative x plus 1 divided by x plus 1, I'm left with negative 1. If you were to FOIL that back out, you would come to this answer. All right. So what this is leading up to is called factoring by grouping, which means that if you have four terms and they don't have a common factor, you put them into two groups and each group has a common factor. And then because each group has a common factor, you can do something like this. OK. I know. Sounds wild. So this example has four terms. Do you see anything common to xy, negative 5y, positive 3x, and negative 15? These three, uh, like these two have 5 in common. These two have x in common. These two have y in common. That's it, right? There is no common factor to all four of the terms, but you can, because there are four of them, you can group them together, okay? Group them together, look at each pair. Group them together just means make, instead of a group of four, we're still looking for factors, so we need groups of two. So instead of groups of four, look at them as three x minus 15 and x y minus five y. Okay. Make sure you keep the sign with that. That was a positive 3x. Good. So if we group them together and look at one set at a time, I just look at xy minus 5y, there is a common factor, right? 3x minus 15, there is a common factor, right? Here, I can divide it by, I can divide 3x by 3, I can divide 15 by 3. Here, I can divide xy by y, and I can divide negative 5y by y. You don't need to write them like that. I just want to make sure you can see what I was doing, OK? Instead, it's better to just, I don't know, block them off, all right? x, y minus 5, y. Don't block it off wrong. x, y minus 5, y. What can I divide them both by? I can divide them both by y. So x, y minus 5, y becomes y times x, y divided by y is x. Negative 5, y divided by y is negative 5. OK? Now I'm looking at the other side. Positive 3x minus 15. What can I divide them both by? I can divide them both by three. 
good. 3x divided by, or sorry, I can divide them all by a positive 3. 3x divided by 3 leaves me x. Negative 15 divided by 3 leaves me with a negative 5. If I had written it straighter, you would see that we have a situation similar to this guy, right? A term times a binomial plus or minus another term times that same binomial. So you can factor out that binomial. So y times x minus 5 plus 3 times x minus 5 becomes, factor out the x minus 5. And what am I left with? y plus 3. Good. And that is all as far as we're going to get today. But it is very important that you feel comfortable with the greatest common factor. But all this is leading up to can you factor by grouping? Okay. So we will do. Oh, only five more examples. Five more examples of factoring by grouping. 